Good day, I am Laika Giselle Picomilla from BSN 2102 and today I'll be performing the return demonstration for the Leopold's maneuver procedure. So the first thing that I am going to do is to wash hands using alcohol in order to deter the spread of microorganisms. After that is to explain the procedure to the patient in order to gain cooperation. Good day ma'am, I am Laika Giselle Picomilla po. Uh, your student nurse for today and today the procedure that we are going to do is the Leopold's maneuver procedure and in this procedure I will be needing to uh, palpate your abdomen would it be all right with you ma'am yes so in this procedure po uh, we'll be uh, locating the fetus as well as its position its activity and its engagement so see to it that the findings of this assessment uh, will remain confidential between you and me is that okay ma'am yes Okay, thank you. So the next thing is to let the patient empty her bladder deviate before the procedure. So mom, would you like to use the comfort room first? No, thanks. Okay. Position the patient on supine with one pillow under her head and with knees slightly flexed. This is in order to facilitate accurate assessment, providing comfort, flexed knees to relieve tension of abdominal musculature. So mom, you can lay down a ball. So the next thing is, if right-handed, stand at woman's right facing the patient for better accessibility of the healthcare provider. So, in this case, I am right-handed and this is the right of my patient. The next thing is to proceed with the first maneuver or the fundal grip. Face the patient and palpate the uterine fundus to determine what part of the fetus lies in the upper part of the fundus. Head feels hard and round, freely movable and bloatable. Bridge feels large, nodular, and softer. So, ma'am, I'm going to palpate your abdomen po. So, it feels um, softer and nodular. So, I assume that uh, this is the, uh, the botox of the baby. After that is the second maneuver or the umbilical grip. Palpate in a downward direction on the sides of the abdomen, applying gentle but deep pressure to determine the position of the fetal extremities, fetal back, and anterior shoulders. On the side of fetal back, a long continuous structure will be felt. Side of extremities will feel nodular. So I'm um, be repeating again for. So on the left side, I feel the um the uh, hard structure so i assume that this is the back of the fetus while on the right side is the uh, softer one so i assume that this is the extremities after that is the third maneuver or the polyx grip place one hand over the symphysis pubis and grasp the lower segment between the thumb and fingers to feel the presenting part if engagement has occurred fetal part feels fixed in the pelvis the head is at inlet or in pelvis. It presenting part is still movable. It is not engaged. So the baby is engaged. After that is the fourth maneuver or the pelvic grip. Turn and face the woman's feet to confirm the findings of the third maneuver and determine the flexion of the fetus head into the pelvis. The cephalic prominence is felt on the side where there is greater resistance to the descent of the vertex. So the place where the resistance is greatest is where you can locate the uh, fetus brow. After that is to locate again the back of the fetus and place the stethoscope over it and listen to the fetal heart tone to one full minute. And I'll be using the uh, diaphragm of the stethoscope. Since I have said earlier that the uh, back of the fetus is on the left side, then I will uh, auscultate on the left side.
So after one minute, the normal FHT is 120 to 160 bits per minute. Note the location, rate, and character of the FHT. This is in order to monitor and evaluate the condition of the fetus. So ma'am, the FHT po is um, 140 bits per minute, which is in the normal range, which is 120 to 160 bits per minute. After that is to make the patient comfortable. This is to provide comfort to the client. After that is to wash hands in order to prevent the spread of infection. Then document the observation made, fetal findings, presentation, position, and altitude, and whether engaged or floating. This is in order to have baseline data for future use. So ma'am, the upper part of fundus feels softer, so it is breech, and this may be the fetus's buttocks. Fetal back is felt on the left side and the extremities are on the right side. The head of the fetus is engaged as it is aligned with the ischial spine. Then, as for the FHT, which is 140 beats per minute. So, all in all, the baby paw is um, normal and healthy. That would be all. So for the taking of fetal heart tone using the stethoscope, the first thing that I am going to do is to wash hands in order to avoid the spread of microorganisms. After that is to explain the procedure to the patient. As listening to the baby's heart rate is a routine assessment periodically to check the baby's condition. So, good day ma'am. I am like a Josophie Comier student nurse for today. And the procedure that we are going to do is to take the fetal heart tone using stethoscope. So, Ma'am, would it be alright to um, auscultate your abdomen po? Yes. Okay. So in this procedure, we are going to check for the baby's condition. Would it be alright with you, ma'am? Yes. Okay. So the next thing is to uh, find a quiet location to provide comfort to the patient. Then, let the client lie down on a soft surface and expose her abdomen for easy accessibility to the client's abdomen of the healthcare provider. After that is to feel the client's stomach and try to locate the baby's back. The midline is generally a good place to locate the fetal heart sound. So in locating the uh, fetus back, you need to find the, um, the long heart structures and it is felt on the uh, left side of the mother. So the next thing is to place the earpiece of the stethoscope and listen carefully for a few minutes through the earpiece in order to provide accurate findings. In case you do not hear the baby's heartbeat, slowly move the stethoscope up or down until you're able to pick up a sound. Moving the stethoscope to several areas on the abdomen will help locate the loudest fetal heart sounds. Count the fetal heartbeats in one full minute to assess accurate and the fetal heart rate and rhythm. So it has been a minute, which is um, the fetal heart rate is 140 beats per minute, which is in normal amount po, in the range of 120 to 160 beats per minute. After that is to make the patient comfortable to provide comfort measures. The next thing that I am going to do is to wash hands in order to avoid the spread of microorganisms. Then document the date, time of assessment, the fetal heart rate and rhythm. Any increases or decreases maternal heart rate and rhythm, the device used, any actions taken as a result of your findings and your patient teaching. So ma'am, for this uh, taking fetal heart rate tone using a stethoscope, so today po is September 20, 2023, 10 o'clock in the morning. 
So, as I have checked naman po, and as cool tape, 140 beats per minute, which is in normal, under the range of 120 to 160 beats per minute. Thank you, ma'am. So, for assisting in normal spontaneous delivery, the first thing that I am going to do is to ensure all delivery equipment supplies are available and place deliveries clean and warm at 25 degrees Celsius. After that is to ensure bladder is empty. So, ma'am, would you like to use the comfort room first? No, thanks. Okay. Assist the woman in a comfortable position. So, now I'm going to assist you to flex your knees. Thank you. Then, the first stage of labor or the dilation stage begins with onset of true labor and ends when the cervix is fully dilated at 10 centimeters. Stay with her and offer her emotional and physical support. Allow her to push as she wishes with contractions. Wait until head visible and perineum distending. Then, wash hands with clean water and soap. Put on gloves just before delivery. Perform double gobbing technique. So, I'll be using an alcohol. Assuming that um, I will be performing a double gobbing technique. Both techniques are for the infection prevention procedures. After that, is the uh, second stage of labor, which is the uh, expulsion stage. It begins with complete dilation of the cervix and ends with the delivery of the infant. Look for the seven cardinal movements of labor, such as engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, external rotation, and expulsion. So, ensure control delivery of the head. Keep one hand gently on the head as it advances with contractions. Support your renewal with other hand and cover anus with body held in position by side of hand during the lift. After that is to leave the perineum visible between thumb and first finger. Ask the mother to breathe steadily and not to push during the delivery of the head. Encourage rapid breathing with mouth open. So mommy breathe po. Feel gently around baby's neck for the cord. Check if the face is clear of mucus and membranes. So I can see the head. After that is to await spontaneous rotation of shoulders and delivery within 1-2 minutes. Apply gentle downward pressure to deliver top shoulder. Then lift baby up towards the mother abdomen to deliver lower shoulder. Place baby on abdomen or in mother's arm. No time of delivery. So, mommy, push. Push po. Push. Push, mommy. Push. Breathe. Okay. Congratulations, mommy. A healthy baby girl. Baby out at 9.37 p.m. So for the third stage of labor or the placental stage, this is from birth to expulsion of placenta. It may last from 5 minutes to no more than 30 minutes. Thoroughly dry the baby immediately, wipe eyes, discard wet cloth, assess baby's breathing while drying. Assess the baby using upgrade scoring system which includes the appearance, pulse, grimace activity, and respiration.
since I am uh, assuming that I have done the uh, double gogging step, then the next thing that I am going to do is to remove the first set of gloves. Assuming that I have already removed it. After that is to clamp and cut the cord within 1 to 3 minutes after birth. Put sterile cord gun tightly around the cord at 2 cm and 5 cm from baby's abdomen. Cut between ties with sterile instrument and observe for oozing water. So I'll be using a uh, cord gun. After that is to cut it using a sterile instrument. After that is to leave the baby on the mother's chest in skin-to-skin -skin contact, place identification label. So this the this is the identification tag which you will place on the, uh, the baby's leg. This contains the uh, mother's identification, the uh, hospital number, as well as the uh, date and uh, time of delivery. After that is to cover the baby, cover the head with the bonnet, and encourage initiation of breastfeeding. Early breastfeeding, um, has many health benefits to the baby. Both the uh, towel and the bonnet keep the uh, infant warm. The next thing is to deliver the placenta, ensuring that the 10 IU oxytocin intramuscular is given. Await strong uterine contraction for 2-3 minutes and deliver placenta by controlled for contraction. So, I have already injected the uh, oxytocin. After that, the play side of left hand and occipital pubis with palm facing towards the mother of the uterus. This applies counter traction to the uterus during control for contraction. At the same time, apply steady sustained control for contraction. If placenta does not descend during for peak, for 30 to 40 seconds of control and cord junction, release both cord junction and the abdomen and wait until the uterus is well contracted again. Then repeat control cord junction with the counter junction. As the placenta is coming out, catch in both hands to prevent tearing of the membranes. If the membrane do not sleep out spontaneously, gently twist them in a rope and move them up and down to assist separation without tearing them. Check the placenta and membranes are complete. Check that uterus is well contracted and there is no heavy bleeding. So here is the placenta and there is no uh, heavy bleeding. After that is the fourth stage of labor. From expulsion of the placenta to a period of 1 to 4 hours after delivery, it is also the critical stage to watch out for postpartum hemorrhage secondary to atony and lacerations. Repeat check every 5 minutes. Examine for cranium, lower vagina, and vulva for tears. So, as I have examined, there are no signs of tears, lacerations, cuts, nor episiotomy. The next thing is to collect, estimate, and record blood loss throughout third stage and immediately afterwards. After that, the last thing that I'm going to do is to remove gloves and perform hand washing.